Welcome everyone to our prayer journey, Revelation Bible study. Today we're doing chapter 10 and we're going to do the entire chapter. Now we left off, all right, where uh, people that were judged under these 200 million man army that kills one third of the world refused to repent. And now there's going to be a slight pause before the seven trumpet is sounded. Perhaps this pause is God's mercy. You know, when God pauses and gets his gospel out, you should respond. So here in chapter 10, verse 1, it says, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Who is this? I will get to that, what I think, as we progress through this chapter. There is a division with good Christian men and women on who this person is. But we will save that as we move through to keep this moving. All right, so what do we have? We have a mighty angel coming down from heaven. He is wrapped in a cloud. He has a rainbow upon his head. His face is like the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. This, many people think, could be Jesus. All right, so let's go on. And he had in his hand a little book opened, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. What does this show? It shows dominion. Here, this great being comes from heaven, has his foot upon one land and upon the sea, saying, I got control of all of it. All right, he has the power in his hands. All right, now, what is this little book that is in his hand? All right, since there's a pause, why does he got a book in his hand here? All right, what is the little book? Is it, is it the seals that Jesus broke open? There's a lot of questions here that we need to look at. Is that the seals that God broke open that he's bringing down in this little book? Is it a summary of that book? Is it the title deed to the earth? What is in this little book? So let us progress. We'll go to verse 3. And he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered from his voice. What do you think seven thunders would sound like? You know, what would you do if you came across a grizzly bear in the woods and he roared at you? Your first tendency would be to run. And I know from hiking, you're supposed to hold your ground, which would be a hard thing to do. But you know, you, you're supposed to stand up and listen to that thing and you know talk gently back to it that you're not frightened. But you're facing here God or God's envoy speaking with these thunders as if he was God. I think you would be very fearful. I think your knees would bang together, all right? So just, just keep that in your imagination as you're standing before God. So if you were standing in front of a grizzly bear, and if you ever seen one of these in person and they stand up, they're basically twice the size of you are, all right? So um, it's, not a, it's not a good thing. So in verse four, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Now, what do we see in the very beginning of the book of Revelation? John was told to write all these things down. And that's what he was doing. So he was being obedient, ready to write it down. And this is why I believe personally, this is not Jesus Christ, but an angel, a highly exalted angel, all right, that speaks like thunder, and Michael did that, I believe, in the book of Daniel when he was prophesizing about Michael, the archangel. He spoke with a voice of thunder, all right? So, he says, seal up these things. The voice told him, do not write. He was told to write, but on this particular thing, he's told not to write. Now we're going to see an oath that this angel makes. 
All right, and the angel which I saw, and I see I have a hard time with John looking at Jesus and saying he's an angel. Now, it could be he didn't know, all right? But, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, as if probably praising God. And I swear by him that liveth forever and ever. He swears by one greater than him. Another reason, all right, is a possibility that Jesus could swear by God the Father. But, you know, he's swearing by something in heaven. And he says, who created heaven and the things that are in and the things of the earth that are in and the sea and the things which are therein. And now this is what he swears, that there should be time no longer. Time is about to expire. Now, we're going to see some of the other books in Revelation are related to this time frame. All right, so we'll, we'll see that as we progress through. But there should be time no longer. The prayers of the saints are being answered. It's a bittersweet thing when prayers are answered and justice is going to be delivered. So in verse 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, which he shall begin to sound the mystery of God, should be finished, as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. What mysteries of God? You know, that is a great joy of reading, reading the Bible. Reading the Bible, investigating the Bible, and you see mysteries unfold. The mystery of God's grace to the people of Israel. The mystery of why, why, why are you mindful of us, God, as David said in his psalm. Why are you mindful of us? We do all these things wrong. Why? That's a mystery. The mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mystery of Israel being brought back together again as one nation one day. It hasn't happened yet. Where he divorced Israel, but he's going to put Israel back together with Judah, and they're going to be his people. Yes, Israel is in God's plan. Israel is key to God's plan. Israel was the one that delivered the, the gospel to mankind. That the middle wall of petition can be broken down between Jew and Greek or Gentile, between God and man. God broke down the middle wall of petition. All of these things were mysteries. If you look in the book of Ephesians, you'll see that Paul called that a mystery. There are many mysteries. Final mystery here is going to be this. It's going to be the mystery of all of the things of all time because the time is out at end. So in verse 8 and 9, And the voice which I heard from heaven spank unto me again and says, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went. So he was told to go, John, and he goes to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. Would you speak to Jesus that way? I mean, I know I go too easily before the throne of God and forget sometimes how great God is. But in the very presence of God, can John go before him and say, give me the book. Give me that little book. He said to me, Take it. All right, that's what the angel says. And eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. Why would this be bitter? Why would it make his stomach hurt? I believe this is what's happening here. Justice is about to be meted out. And boy, when you see someone who's done something wrong, so heinous, so wrong, and you see justice administered to them in a courtroom and they go to jail or they're going to be executed, you can rejoice in a sense and say, justice has been served. And there are many criminals that get life in prison and get out even though they murdered multiple people. That is not justice. But when we see justice, it is sweet as honey. But no man, 
knowing Jesus Christ and praying for this kind of justice would be happy what was going to happen to them next if they had to sit there and watch the judgment being administered to them. And today's judgment is swift. They give you a needle and the person's dead. All right, the justice here that's going to be meted out is similar to electric chair where you're fried, where you're burnt. And that's got to be bitter. That's got to be bitter. You want the justice. You want what's fair. But you really, in a sense, if you're a godly man, don't want to see it. And that's why, as a Christian, we should be interceding for others that they can avoid such judgment that God will give them a heart of repentance, as we saw in the last chapter. With all of the destruction around them, they refused to repent. So let's close out this chapter with the last two verses. And I took the little book out of my the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was sweet as honey. And as soon as I ate it or eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. All right, what is that last part? I'm not going to end here real quick because this is really an important thing. John was on an island. Couldn't get off. He's on the island of Pat Patmos. I don't know if he got off later. Maybe he did, but he's in his 90s. And uh, all he could do is write down this book. So John put these prophecies down in writing, excluding the one he says, don't write that down. And he sends the book to the seven churches that we've seen. The seven churches with the Spirit of God. The seven specific churches of that time in a circle, in a trade route. And what are we reading today? the revelation of Jesus Christ. One of the reasons I do these videos is it'll stay. You know, if I'm not raptured out and I die, Lord willing, it'll stay. And if I don't get many views now, I don't care because God told me to do this. Perhaps many will get saved during tribulation. I can only hope and pray. But look what happened with John. He wrote it down. And you have it in your hands if you want. It is the most popular book by sales for centuries. You know, there was one time that somebody made a remark, I think it was Voltaire, that the Bible will be dead in a hundred years, and yet it still sells. Unfortunately, more people need to respond to it and read it. So here's the call to you. Again, you have a chance to repent if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Just look into the body of this video and it'll tell you how you can be saved and know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and have access to the Father. And then when you pray, the prayers of the saints will be precious and Jesus will be interceding for you. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.